you once, we told you twice You didn't listen to our advice, now you know You had to find out for yourself you would Hello and welcome to Everybody's Talking with Kevin Derryberry, a Seraphic Sound Studio podcast recorded right here at Seraphic Sound Studio. Uh, we're just glad that you're tuning in. If you're just now tuning in to it, please call your neighbors, your friends, text them, share this with them, because tonight is going to be really, really good. I got my good friend Jeff Gardner with me tonight, and Jeff is a incredible musician. He is a friend. He is a a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He is a recovering addict, and he's got a whole lot going on. and And he's a, an amazing guitarist. Uh, you'll hear some of that later on. But uh, Jeff, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. Well, this is cool. Uh, it's, it's my blessing to have you, man. Uh, yeah. You saw us do one with your buddy Quentin. I did. And you called and you said, "Hey." Uh, I would like to do one and I want to cover these topics and um, I was like that's amazing so many people in our our community and our nation and our world today deal with some of the things that you deal with and it's Absolutely. kind of a silent trap it's a it, it's it's tough isn't it yeah Peter, there's people everywhere and you know uh, we know some they just suffer in silence because unless you deal with it it's it's hard to to grasp and and wrap your mind around and uh cuz it doesn't make sense to to people who don't deal with it tell us exactly you know what it is you know by name and and uh clinically what what it is you deal with so yeah when i saw your podcast with uh, Quentin it just kind of struck me this is just such a cool platform to talk about different issues and one thing that's you know, the Lord has really carried me through and put me on my and put on my heart is uh, dealing with you know like clinical depression and anxiety. And I'm not, I'm not talking about the blues or being sad. I'm talking full bone, blown, full body, unable to get out of the bed, depression mm -hmm. for no reason. Yeah, and you know, I've struggled with it my entire life. It's led me to you know drugs and alcohol and self medication and. You know, and the Lord has really put that on my heart because He carries me through it. Yeah, and and I've seen you go through it. Um, you have. What did it What did it lead you to? Like, um, I know you had some issues with drugs. Yeah. And why did you think your depression and all led to the drugs, or do you think the vice versa? I think is a it's a complex <laughs> uh, issue because you get trapped in this cycle of depression, self medication, more depression, more self medication. Mm -hmm. You try to get out of it, the depression kicks back in, and the only outlet I had was uh, self medicating. Mm -hmm. You know, as, as a young teenager, I, I dealt with a lot of physical trauma from some health issues that got me started on the narcotics in the first place right and the depression and in uh you know not having an outlet for that or anybody that understood i mean you know i had adhd before it was a thing now right. everybody's got it yeah i know. So was your typical adhd kid bouncing off the walls and you know that what comes with that is a lot of self-doubt and yeah know. um yeah i, I I believe there's a lot of things out there that that we all had as kids and they're yeah, just now absolutely. naming it and I'll go hey yeah that was me yeah. yeah no wonder I couldn't pay attention in school no wonder I you know <laughs> uh you know I felt like we were you know smart people and you're you're like a genius and but you know sometimes your 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 chemical makeup you're wired different. I'm wired different, you know? Absolutely. And, and back then, you know, people didn't know. Yeah. Um, so what, you know, as you you were uh, dealing with all this, uh, you 
did you turn to music as well or is so, that just something you loved from a child i've always loved music i, I can remember as a, a child my dad always played classical music right and it seems like for me especially with the adhd stuff that the busier and more complex the music is, the calmer my brain is. Right. I know it doesn't make sense. Some people listen to it and they're like, what is this noise? And it just calms my brain down. I mean, I've I've listened to a lot of your music <laughs> and I'm sitting there going, how in the world does he do all that? My mind can't think that fast. And, and it's really, really good. Uh, yeah. The style of it, you know, it's like you do it very well. Uh, and so when you play it, I'll go, he must be able to really, you know, I feel like it would be too hard to play for me to think about anything else. But you, you use it as a, as a form of worship to the God. I do, to I really God. do. Um, and even before finding, finding Christ, it's, that was my outlet right. for you know meditation or whatever and today it's when i play and i get in those zones it's i don't know how to explain it other than <clears throat> it's almost like a, a direct line to god for me it's i can really have a conversation with him and meditate on things that otherwise my brain is just bouncing all over the place and can't do right so i'm a bag full of squirrels on a good day so <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know the feeling yeah you know. um it was kind of neat because quentin you know quentin our friend yeah. the, even myself when we first started doing music and stuff we it was ma basically for ourselves. it was self Absolutely. pleasure self whatever you know gratification uh hey look at me but every one of us it seems like once we found Jesus, the answer to all our issues, the the one that brings us this perfect peace that we we can have, yeah, uh, knowing that our future and our our life is in His hands, and we trust Him because He's the Most High God, the Creator of heaven and earth, has a plan for us, a plan not to harm us but to prosper us. Once we turn our lives over to Him, the gifts that He's given us. We, we take them and move them towards him and focus them on him. And uh, that's one of the things that that I, all three of us have in common. Absolutely, and, yeah. And I think that's just the power of Christ, you know, the way he He uh, molds us and shapes us, you know. Yeah, he, he's amazing. He's gotten me playing music that I never thought I would play. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, like when when you first came to Westwood, and you know wanted to join the praise team you know i listened to what how you played and i went this guy's really good but i don't know if any of this will work chris because he's <laughs> he's really too good and so we had to dumb you down you know or slow you down because it was like i'm like going I'm not sure i know any praise and worship songs that that'll fit in but, but we're gonna use the guy because he's good and it was it was really a uh, blessing now early on too you 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 would call me we would talk you were struggling yeah you you wanted to get your life right and i don't know how how god brought us together but he did and we had a lot of conversations we did uh, well i mean long story short after it was some time after my last stint in treatment. Uh, Amy had started going to Westwood, and I came and, you know, the first worship service, I was like, all right, <laughs> this is, I can dig it, you know? Yeah. And, and thankfully at Westwood, we've got <clears throat> preachers that, that preach the gospel, mm -hmm. for one. Amen. And, um, uh, started talking about principles that I was learning about through other venues like 12 step programs and stuff like that. And I don't know if things started clicking. Um, but I, I got in a mode where I, you know, fallen down and my life either needed to change or I needed to end it. That's where I was. Yeah. Um, 
I remember, you know, bringing you on, and it was like, okay, Jeff, we got a standard here. We got to behave in this manner, both publicly and, and you know, at church, at home, in public, all that. And you struggled. Oh. And I remember specifically one night you were at practice, and it was so weird because you were mumbling. I remember that. I hate to bring this up, but <laughs> it was like, dude, what is going on with this guy? You know, I can't understand anything he says. And no. um, so I just thought, well, um, Jeff, are you okay? And come to find out you had kind of relapsed. And so we had an intervention. Yeah, I, I remember that. Do you remember me and Randy Watts sitting I remember. You down? So, yeah, one thing the Lord has done to sp- despite myself is put people in my life that have you know held me accountable one and and yeah. lifted me up, up when i needed it i remember something very specific you said to me that was true but i didn't want to admit it at the time was he was like i think kevin you were just like i just think you're selfish <laughs> <laughs> and i was like you jerk he's probably right <laughs> yeah uh, well you know Everybody, everybody's learned lately that I kind of say what's on my mind, and yeah, and, and I, I might that. not be right, but I'm, I, you know, who knows? Yeah. Um, so you were in a a small group with a bunch of men right now at church. Yes, correct. How how is that? I mean, do you? It's awesome. I mean, you know, it's. Uh... You know me, I'm I'm a bit of an introvert, so it, it takes a while for me to really open up and get to know people. Because mm-hmm. that's just this way I'm wired. I've always been that way, and uh, it, it's been really good. It's uh, <clears throat> it's gotten me back in the word. Because you know, I, part of my story is that we moved away and came back, and right. When when we moved away, I, I got completely completely isolated, and that you know part of that was COVID, and part of that was just the area, and part of that was just me. Well, yeah, it's always uh, I've noticed um, a lot of times when people leave the church or join another church or say, you know, a lot of times they're just escaping the people that hold them accountable, you know. Yeah. Or sometimes not always but but it always seems like too that next thing you hear is they're not doing well because they left the church or if they've left the church totally then they're not doing well if they've left to go somewhere else it could be that they're trying to hide you know from the people that know them or maybe they don't intend to hide but they get somewhere and nobody knows them and nobody's holding them accountable like we know you yeah and uh you're not imprisoned by us by any stretch you know it's <laughs> but when i see you or you see me or we see a friend or somebody we love a brother in christ sister in christ struggling we we encourage we pray and we yeah. we try to pull them back you know to where they are where god wants them to be uh to to use their gifts and their talents and and I've seen you grow so much man it's it's like you know uh Kenneth our pastor one time he's heading overseas to Israel yeah and you just saw him walking down the street and pulled him over and said hey dude I want to pray for you and that right there it blew his mind it did yeah here's a guy that came to our church a drug addict struggling he and his family got baptized saved and now he's pulling me aside saying man i want to pray for you and at a time when he needed it and he was you know and yeah. i can confess that all us pastors and ministers need it absolutely more than you think well we're gonna take a little break right now um but 
So good. We're going to come back. We're going to get some of your music going. I mean, cool. wow. Wow. Mind blowing. And uh, we're just going to talk a little bit more about, you know, what God's doing in your life, your family, and uh, just um, right here on Everybody's Talking with Kevin Derryberry, uh, a Seraphic Sound podcast.
Okay, was I right? The boy can shred a guitar. It's <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, we got to figure out a way to get that stuff out there, you know. But you know, well, that that amazing gift. You never really got to use it until you turn over turn it over to the Lord, and now He's opened doors for you to use it, and that's what's amazing about. God, he gave you the gift and he gave it to you to use for his purpose and glory. And I've been been there, you know, yeah. I've wasted a lot of time using stuff for my own glory, you know. So let's talk a little more about this depression, anxiety, these things you go through. Uh, a lot of us out there don't know, but there are going to be people listening to this podcast who who need to know other people who struggle just like you. Yeah. Um, it, it's tough. It's, it's a real thing. Uh, people that don't suffer or have a family member that goes through it, you know, just think, Oh, well just pull yourself up by your bootstraps. And what they don't understand is I physically can't get out of bed, mm. you know, much less put thoughts together to do the things that need to be done. And uh, that's something I've struggled with my entire life. And since coming to Christ, I still struggle. Mm -hmm. that's, but the difference now is I struggle with the depression. I struggle with the physical side effects of that, the exhaustion, the fatigue, the headaches, the stomach issues. But there's a hope and peace about it that I'd never had before that <clears throat> I don't know how to explain it other than I'll be going through this. I'll be absolutely miserable. I'll make everybody around me miserable, but I know it's not the end. You know, I know that when I put my eyes on Christ, that although I may be suffering at the time, he's got a hope. There's a hope in a in a future there. Mm -hmm. You know, before Christ I had no hope in anything. I had no future of anything. I was uh you know, I was I was destined to die. I should be dead. Yeah. Um but it, I don't know how to explain it other than it's different. That the hopelessness part of it is not there. Even though, you know, um and to, to explain it a little more, that people that suffer with severe depression, everything in their life can be going perfect. No issues with family, no nothing, and you want to eat a bullet. Mm. It, it doesn't make sense. I, I think it's just, uh, you know, one of the gazillions, multitudes of issues that are a result of a fallen creation. Yeah, um, yeah. But there's a hope and a peace about it when I go through these periods. So last year during COVID, uh, I went through, I go through these seasons of depression and anxiety. And I probably had the la the worst season I've had in 20 years, about a year ago. That's when I decided to move back. And, uh, but even when I was going through it, before when I would shut down or reach out for uh, some kind of uh, self-medication or whatever, I put my eyes on the Lord now. And uh, right. even though it's miserable, even though I can't get out of bed, even though uh, the physical portion of it is there, the hopelessness is not there anymore. Right. Uh, you know, I, I can't control some of the thoughts that come in my head because, I mean, people that suffer can tell you there's some dark stuff that flies through your brain. Mm -hmm. I'm able to ignore that now. I'm able to see it for what it is, uh, and it's, you know, ultimately attack of our enemy, right. any of our soul, you know, and I see it for what it is now. Yeah. Satan loves to attack our minds. Absolutely. And, and he, he can't take our souls. No. Uh, once we have 
turn to Jesus Christ and believe by faith that he is who he is. He died on the cross for our sins, that God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, and whosoever believes in him should not perish. We believe, we have faith in Jesus Christ. We've repented of our sin. He has forgotten them. When God looks at us, the great God that created heavens and earth, not only is he good, not only is he loving, but he is just. And there's a sin that has just taken over this world, a sin nature. And and once we repent, turn from our sin, take on the righteousness of a perfect Savior, Jesus Christ, we are held forever in the hands of God. But we still are in a fallen world. We still are under attack by the enemy of our minds. And that's that's Satan and he attacks in so many ways. He tries to, like with you, it's depression for other people. It could be lust. It could be a number of things. Um, yeah. Greed, hate, jealousy, pride. I mean, I think I got a little bit of all of it. But Yeah, I'm, I'm sitting here going through the list. I'm like, eh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and on the days that we are at our darkest, I have to say, okay, God, I'm yours. I don't know how. I don't know why. You would yeah. take somebody like me, but I know I'm yours, and my peace and my hope is in that. It's not in my abilities or anything that I can do, but it's in everything that Christ can do. And he can bring a peace that surpasses all understanding in the midst of a storm if we just let him. Exactly. We got to take our eyes off the storm and put them on Jesus. We take our eyes off our issues. And we put them on Jesus. The issues will come again. But the more we practice getting in the word and trusting in Jesus and putting our eyes on him, and the, the more that becomes a natural response or a habit or exactly, you know, I was, Toad, and I don't know if you've ever heard this, you know, from people that knew me from the past and knew the my alcohol, uh, you know, struggles. And they said, you just traded one addiction for the other when you turned to Jesus. And I'm thinking, and what's wrong with that? You know, <laughs> I mean, I'd rather be addicted to Jesus than addicted to drugs or alcohol. Absolutely. Or any of the other things that are out there. Um, how... Um, how did it affect your family? It's, uh, you know, addiction, uh, mental illness, it, it takes a horrible toll on our, our families. Mm -hmm. You know, Amy can tell you it's it's been rough. Yeah. It's been rough for the family. Um, but it, what's amazing to me is how God can take these seasons of just pure misery and turn it into good and a growing experience. And every time I go through one of these seasons, I come out of it better than I was before because it really does. It, it draws me closer to the word. It draws me closer to God. Uh, I tend to meditate more, uh, pray more and I'm better for it. You know, I, I, I kind of think about Paul when he asked the Lord to remove the thorn three times Mm. there's a reason God hasn't taken this from me. Right. Um, and my only hope is that he can take a, a broken person like me and use me for some good. You know, if I help one person that it's worth it. Yeah. I, I, I can identify with Paul a lot. Yeah. Cause you know, our righteousness is filthy rags. We take on the righteousness of Jesus there are things in my life that I still struggle with and and it's like why do I do what I don't want to do and, exactly. and I know not to do but I still do it and I know the benefits of not doing it and I know the the downfall of doing it thank God is my salvation and my hope and peace it and dependent upon my perfection but it's dependent upon the perfection of our Savior Jesus Christ yeah and um, I know that you've called me many a times. You and Amy would be in a struggle. And I know she's had issues too, yeah. right? And 
you know, all had fallen short of the glory of God, ain't no doubt. And we just had numerous talks. Um, I've come close to calling you sometimes, man. You ain't alone okay. in this thing. Call uh, me anytime. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, one of the things I always say to you is like, okay, I know it seems like it's bad. And you might be right about whatever you're talking with your wife about, but sometimes we can be so right we get wrong real quick, you know. Yeah. But it, it's just the way we're wired, you know. Um, in marriage, it's you know it's not an easy thing. I was talking to Connie the other day. So marriage isn't easy. There's nothing it's, easy about marriage. It's hard. That's why we yeah. need Jesus. To Absolutely. Help us through those things. I, I don't know how we could do it without Jesus. No. Uh -uh. But um. You know, having you here today and having you text me and say, hey, hey I want to share my story. Uh, everybody's got a story. There's a lot of people out there that have similar stories to you, and some of them have similar stories to me. Um, they, I pray that this will help them. I do, too. I pray, and I appreciate you coming on and just uh, letting down your guard and being transparent so that yeah. people can uh, see that there is hope. There is hope. And I, you know, I want people to know that if you're in Christ and you're struggling, that's okay. Hmm. Cause I thought that becoming a Christian when I, early on that supposedly all my problems would go away and yeah, it's just, it's not reality. <laughs> no. Not no. at all. No. But he promises, Jesus promises he'll be with you every step of the way. And yeah. that's been my experience. And that's the only thing that's gotten me through it. He'll never leave you or forsake you. I, I remember uh, when God got a hold of me, I had, you know, had a DUI. Yeah. And I was like, between the time I got the DUI and the time I went to court, God had come along and changed my heart. Yeah. I still had to go to court. Absolutely. And I still had to go through all that. He didn't change my circumstances. He changed my heart and he walked with me through my circumstances. So I wouldn't make it worse or, you know, it's, it's, um, he starts to mold you and change you and walks with you through the things, teaching you and showing you the way that we need to go. And um, I really love that about the Lord. Uh, he will allow you to experience the results of your decisions. Yes, he will. And if you decide to follow him and live for him and do everything according to his word, they're blessings. I mean, Absolutely. but then there again, there, there are hardships, but again, there he walks with you. If you decide not to follow him, if you decide to try to live this life on your own, uh, not according to the way the creator has made you and wants you to be, it's going to be tough. And plus in the end, if you, if we don't know the Lord, um, we will be separated from him, from, from him for all eternity in a place called hell. And we don't want that. No, uh, I, I want my heaven when I leave this earth and I want some of my heaven now. I want to be with Jesus <laughs> now and I want him living in my life. And um, because he makes it uh, more purposeful. Exactly. There's more meaning. There's more hope. There's there is a peace in the midst of the storms. And but, you know, you saw in the Bible, the storms did come. Absolutely. The disciples were on the boat. The storms came, but Jesus came and said, peace be still. And that's that's what we got to count on. You know, that's yeah. what we depend on. That's what we know as Christians. That's, you know, I'm slowly learning not to create my own storms, too. So Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very well put. Yeah. We got so, enough. They're going to come out. You don't have to yeah. make your own, you know. He's, he's slowly pruning some of that stuff. And it hurts. But yeah. it's, Letting go of, of things. I remember early, guys, it, it, it would be like, okay, I got that. All right. Now, God, what? I would pray, and I just, he says, what about this? Really? 
I got to do that too. Yeah. But as I let go of each thing, um, it just, it just made sense. And the, the more I try to be like Christ, the more I realize I got a long way to go still. Yeah. The more, the, the, the more I learn about, about Christ, the, the more I realize I'm broken. Yeah. But he, you know, he says, pick up your cross daily. Um, some days that cross is really heavy and some days it's, it's all right. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. But in, so we, we press on. We exactly. Press on. Uh, what, let me real quick. Now you've been involved in, in Kevin Derby ministries a good bit for a while. Yeah. You've gone places and you know, what, what has been, you know, why did you, why do you do that? I mean, well, you know, it's like when we go to Love Lady in uh, Thomasville, the, the the men's prison. I see myself out there, you know. Mm, there I see myself, go. and it's like, you know, if there's hope for me, there's hope for anybody. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, you know, there's a, there's a joy in that, and then you know, the selfish part of it's, you know, I like to play music with you guys. You know, yeah, that's really. part of it too. But more more than anything, it's. I want to be useful to my God, mm -hmm. however that is. Mm -hmm. You know, I yeah. think He can take one of them squirrels and do something with it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yep. So, Use my squirrels, God. Absolutely. You, well, so. um, you know, it's, it's. I've seen you go up to people who have issues, like you had addictions. I've seen you minister to people, and it's just I. I'll just. It would just I would just beam because I'm going, look at that. Look what God has done. And it's so good. Um I give him all the glory. Absolutely. Um, and uh man, thank you, Jeff. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's, man, a blessing. it's been a been a great great podcast and I I pray that God will just use it mightily for his glory. And um I want to thank Amy and and Abby Grace for letting you come over tonight and Absolutely. hang out with us. Yeah, and uh, just love all your family, Sophia. You know, love her, and pray you know daily for you guys that uh, God would use you. And thank you for allowing me to be a part of what God's doing in your life. You know, absolutely. Thank you. So um, we uh, that is Jeff. Right there, Jeff Gardner, friend, musician, composer, uh, guitar player extraordinaire, and uh, a follower of Jesus Christ, a uh, the a blood bought child of the Most High God. Amen. And so, thank y'all for being with us tonight or today, whenever it is you're watching this. And I just pray that God will uh, just bless you in the days to come and if you know somebody who needs to hear this testimony uh, please share this with them subscribe to our our youtube page our facebook like and all that kind of stuff um, and we can reach more people that way so god bless you guys we'll see you later now you know You had to find out for yourself You wouldn't listen to no one else Now you know How's everything looking now?